today's video we're going to be going over how to use uh, Fortigate 6.2 to set up an MSSP using VRF. When you're working with some of the larger chassis, what you can do is implement VDOMs to create specific segments for individual customers. Now, for this lab instance, I'm labbing it up and I'm going to pretend that we have several different departments and I want to give each of those departments their own rack space. So the, the technology that we're going to use for this purpose is VRF, and that is going to allow us to replicate IP space in each of these racks. So people in the first rack can use 10.0.0.0/8, and people in the second rack, third rack, fourth rack, etc., can also use 10.0.0.0/8, and they can use 172s, and they can use 192s, and it doesn't really matter; they're completely independent. Um, and we're going to do all of this virtually inside of a larger Fortigate chassis. The ones that we're using are 1100Es. Um, and the way that you really do this is by having an ingress firewall and an egress firewall to take the physical links out of the firewall. And you're going to use virtual links to set up, in our example we have five, but you can use, you know, you can use up to 31 and 6.2 is the number of VRFs that the Fortigate supports. Um, so we're going to set each of these scale out each of these firewalls in the scale out section section with their own VRF ID. So they're all going to be handed public IPs by the ISP firewall. We're going to get routed to slash 24 to the ISP firewall and we're going to divide that out into slash 27s for all of these lab firewalls. And then on each of these lab firewalls we're going to tag, well, I shouldn't say tag, we're going to set the interfaces with specific VRF IDs and then in this physical one, we are going to aggregate all of those VRFs and we're going to give them all the entire private space. So all the 10 dots, all the 172s, all the 192s are all going to route down to this Arista. And then this Arista is going to be aware of the VRFs as well. And it's going to uh, pass that traffic along to a layer two switch in each of these racks. Right. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like in the firewall. All right, so we're starting in the ISP firewall. And what you'll see here is that we have uh, an aggregate interface for our, SD or our WAN, and it's part of an SD-WAN interface. And then what we have is a slash 24 that is routed to that WAN IP. And then down below, what you'll see is that we have virtual links for each one of the VDOMs. Um, and this is going to route a uh, slash 27 of publics to each of those firewalls. And that's pretty much all there is to this one. This one's pretty vanilla. And next we are going to take a lab at the INV firewall. So on this firewall, what you'll see is that the WAN interface starts with the LAB. So this is going up to the ISP firewall and then the LAN interface is uh, PHY. This is going down to the aggregate VDOM. So the WAN interface has a public IP. It's a member of the SD WAN interface uh, and the physical has a private IP. So these are slash 30s that we're using simply for routing. <coughs> so this is going to route it down to uh, the lab dash PHY physical firewall with a slash 30 and then it's going to take its next hop to the Arista downstream with another slash 30. So let's get into the CLI so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the VRFs. Um, so this is the WAN interface and if we do a show we can see that it has public IP. And Specifically, it is in VRF5. So on the FortiGate, the VRFs are integers. So you need to do one, two, three, four. On the Arista, it's going to be an actual string. So it's going to have a name. Um, and those names are just going to match the specific VDOM that they're going to. So let's look at the land side of this as well. So this is also in VRF5. And if we look at the routing table, we 
you can see that the entire routing table for this firewall is inside of ERF5. So it has its default route to go out to the WAN. And it has, it's directly connected 10 dot, but I'm kicking all the 10 dot slash 8, 172 slash 12, and 192 slash 16 down to the physical, inter the interface that's going to go to the aggregate lab-phy firewall. Um, and then I'm going to route these two specifically for authentication when we get that way, when we get that far. Uh, I just started messing with the authentication portion today, so we'll have to cover that in a future video. So let's get down to the lab physical firewall so you can see the difference. So we have a physical lag that comes out of this firewall. And it has a VLAN on this lag that goes down for every one of them. Each of these VLANs is in their respective VRF. Each of these virtual links is in its respective VRF. So let's take a look at the innovation firewall. So we have all of these in this one. Uh, but we'll specifically look at, let's look at our knock one. Right. So that one is in VRF4. This one is in VRF5. And they've got that slash 30 that allows them to route. Right? So there's a unique IP address for each of these. And if we do a get router info, what you'll see is five specific routing tables. So we have VRF1. This is going to match the video. VRF2 is going to match development. VRF3, VRF4, VRF5. And you can make it up to 31 of these. So you can have all of these interfaces are virtual. And they're kicking out to a physical interface, but they're writing a VLAN, which again, virtual, all the way down to the Arista switch. And then at the Arista switch, they are then going to route up to their respective racks. So then, we, you know, you can put a firewall in here. You can put your own switches in here if you just want to set up um, little computers, servers, whatever it is. You can do all of that here. You can VPN directly to your firewall and get down here. Now, in a customer scenario, <coughs> imagine that each of these had an IPsec tunnel that went back to the, the sites. So if they have an office in Orlando and they have an office in California, you can create a VPN tunnel to both of them. And then you can set up their compute at your data center as a cloud provider. And it doesn't matter about the IP space. So you can replicate IP space between these racks. You don't have to worry about routing tables. You can set up dynamic routing protocols if you want to. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. But this is the core framework to set up that scale out architecture for an MSSP. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hey guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button. It helps with the engagement. Please hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and we will give you more of this content in the future. Thanks.